Hey everyone, in this video we're going to give you a tour of this extra small tiny house with a really unique interior design. This tiny house is called the Unicorn on Salt Spring Island in BC. We've spent a few nights in here and before we leave, we're going to give you a full tour. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. We'll give you more information about them at the end, plus a link to a free two-month trial. So this tiny house is 22 and a half feet long, going from the outside edge of the porch all the way to the front of the gooseneck. So on the inside, it's probably about 19 feet long and it's eight and a half feet wide. So it's a bit on the small side for a tiny house in terms of length. And the ceiling is also a little bit lower because there's no loft in here. This tiny house was built by Rudy Triller on Vancouver Island and he did a fantastic job with this build. What's really cool about this tiny house is that everything is on the main floor. So as you can see over here, they built the bed on top of the gooseneck and there's only two steps to get up to it. This forms a nice separate enclosed bedroom area. So at first you might think it would feel a bit tight in there because it is an enclosed space, but there is a window at the back that you can open and the ceiling is actually quite high. And then on top of that, there's a nice big doorway at the front so it still feels quite open and doesn't feel claustrophobic at all. It's a really nice cozy spot for hanging out, reading, watching movies on a laptop. There's also some nice shelving on the three walls and some hooks on the side of the bed for a bit of storage. As you can see, the two steps to get up to the bed are pretty high, so there's a handle here to help get up. And then the main step has a little bit of storage and these two cubbies right here. This is also a bench and if you wanted to make it a bit more of a comfy sitting area, you could add some cushions here. Over here is the bathroom. To close it off, you can see there's a nice handmade wooden door with a beautiful stained glass window on it. And for extra privacy, there's also a curtain on the inside of the bathroom. So going in right here. So it's a small bathroom. It's pretty compact, but there's everything in here. There's a full size stand up shower. Down here is the separate urine diversion toilet and the wood chips are here for the toilet. There's a bit of storage in this cubby right here, a bit more storage behind the mirror. And then there's a little space saving corner sink right here. And super important, especially in a tiny house, is the bathroom fan. And the curtain for extra privacy is just here. This tiny house is called the Unicorn, so U with Y-E-W. And U is a type of wood that's found here on the west coast of Canada, and it's got this reddish brown hue to it. It's just a beautiful wood. And you can see it in a lot of the features in this tiny house, like in this countertop here, some of the window and door frames, and some of the shelving. And then one of the nice features of the tiny house is this raw, piece of wood here that kind of ties everything together. And now we're already at the other end of the tiny house. It's that small. So here is the dining area. So there's an old antique table here and a couple chairs. And I think this is a nice functional area, but if I was to live in here, I think I would custom build a small couch. Uh, I would custom build it because I would try to make it as shallow as possible to leave enough room in the kitchen and in the hallway here. Um, but for long-term living, for me, I guess I'm a big fan of couches and comfort. So that would be a top priority. And I think it's something that could be done pretty easily and it would add a lot of comfort to this tiny house. And there's a nice big picture window here right in front of the dining table. Now we're in the kitchen, it's compact but functional. So there's a full-size sink a two burner propane cooktop, and an electric bar fridge down here. There's a bit of storage on top for some dishes. There's a small drawer here for cutlery. Under the sink, there's a cubby here for pots and pans. And on the right here, there's another cubby with a garbage, a compost bin, and a hot water heater. 
And then on top here, there's a fan for ventilating the kitchen area. Again, very important for getting rid of moisture and cooking smells in such a small space. As you can see, there's two doors in this tiny house. This one over here opens up and leads to the front porch, the covered porch. Over here is the front door. It has a nice full glass window, which makes it really bright in here, but it also serves two purposes. This front door can be removed in the winter and it can be replaced with an insert that has a small wood burning stove. So that's what they usually use for the winter months. But for the rest of the time, there's only this small electric heater down here. And we've actually found this little heater to be more than enough in this tiny space. We're actually a little bit too warm at night sometimes. I think that's partly because this is a small space so it doesn't take too much to heat it up. But I also think it was pretty well built and well insulated. So the floor is insulated with some rigid foam boards, which is covered with a fine mesh to keep the rodents out. And then everything else is insulated with some fiberglass bats. Another really nice feature of this tiny house, which really extends the living space if it's nice outside, is the deck that was built on the side of the tiny house. So it's quite large. There's a sitting area out there with a wood stove, a dining table, a barbecue. So there's loads of space to hang out outside. And then for privacy, there's two vertical planters that the owners built. This tiny house is on the grid. So for electricity, it's plugged onto the main house that's on the property here. And then for water, there's a hose that's buried underground and that's connected to the main house as well. It was great spending a few days in here. It's a nice, cozy, functional space with all the essentials and the interior design is really well balanced. There's a lot of white and a lot of windows to create a nice, bright, spacious feeling in here. And then there's some dark wood accents to warm up the place. One thing that we noticed is that we really enjoy having the bed on the main floor easily accessible without having to go up and down a ladder uh, to go to a loft. Obviously, tiny houses have lofts because you gain a lot of space by having them. But for us, it's almost worth losing that space for the convenience of not going up and down a ladder. Another thing we like is the covered front porch area. You lose a bit of square footage in the tiny house, but I think it's really nice to be able to hang out out there if it's raining. Also, when you're coming in, opening your door, you're not getting rained on. You can also leave your boots out there and other outdoor gear and it stays dry. The Unicorn Tiny House is parked on Salt Spring Island right now, so if you want to check that out, I'll put the Airbnb link in the description below. We want to thank Skillshare again for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives with thousands of online classes designed for real life. They have classes for all skill levels on everything from photography and creative writing to video production and marketing. And most classes are under 60 minutes, so you can learn new skills pretty quickly. Right now we're interested in this class by Justin Bridges about modern money habits because the start of a new year is a great time for us to really look at our finances and make a plan that's focused on what's important to us. You can click the link in the description to get two free months of premium membership and explore your creativity. After the trial, the annual subscription is less than $10 a month, so it's a really affordable way to keep learning new skills all year round. So click the link in the description to get started. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.